Uh, what are you reading, man? I see you're in the sports book. Uh, what are you reading over there? Variance. Can you read it? I can read it. In like probability theory and statistics, variance is the expectation of the squared deviation of a random variable from its mean, and it informally measures how far a set of random numbers are spread out from their mean. The variance has a central role in statistics. It's used in descriptive statistics, statistical inference, hypothesis testing, goodness of fit, Monte Carlo sampling, amongst many others. This makes it a central quantity in numerous fields such as physics, biology, chemistry, economics, and finance. The variance is the square of the standard deviation, the second central moment of a distribution, and the covariance of the random variable with itself, and it's often represented by the equation. You know what that means? What is that? That means shit happens. That means Hail Marys happen. That means fumbles happen. That means Philadelphia doesn't go for the two-point conversion and gets the cover. That means you think you won if you have Baltimore, or you think you covered if you had Cincinnati. That means that anything can happen on any given Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's called variance. But what doesn't vary is doing the work and making sure that your number is correct and getting the right number. And if you are playing at the right number, understanding that a line maker, if he does his work correctly, should put out a math model where games are covering correctly 50% of the time. Your job is to trade those games, and what you'll find is that if you can trade within the margin of 50%, you can't make money betting the same amount of money on every game because what would be the point if you know you're going to always, on 100 games, you're pretty much going to go 50-50. That's the point of toss. So if you put that into effect, most gamblers, when they gamble, they try to win more games than they lose and not vary the amount of money, back to variance, the amount of money that they play on the games. As I stand here at the sports book, we're going to do a little exercise on the value of variance. So let's talk about the NFL. Tonight you have two teams squaring off. One is 45 minutes up the street from you, mm -hmm. in lovely Washington, D.C. Actually, not D.C., in Maryland. Um, Landover. Just another Landover, Maryland. And so, as I'm sitting here at the Palms Racing Sports Book, let's talk about statistics. Tell me, if you've played every favorite for the same amount of money this football season without any handicapping whatsoever for one hundred dollars a game. What's my win loss record? Well, I've been crunching these all day. It's if you played every favorite this year, you win hundred and eight games, you lose hundred and ten games at a rate of forty nine point five four percent. Okay, so let's say it's slower for the listener. Go ahead. If you played every single favorite, you won a hundred and eight games. That's ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Correct. And you lost a hundred and ten games. You lost a hundred and ten games. Correct. And let's and let's call it straight juice at one ten. That means you lost twelve thousand one hundred dollars. Correct. Which means that with a two game margin, you lost thirteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So you're minus thirteen hundred dollars, not varying your wager size. Right. That's what, that, that, and that's something separate called our, our Kelly percentage, which we'll get to right, later. Correct. If you if you kept your Kelly at one unit of one hundred dollars, you lost thirteen units, losing only two games. So the favorites are minus two games on the season. Mm -hmm. This goes back to the video I did with Kenny White uh, the last trip, where he said there's a four percent edge to the dogs, and there's a one percent net loss um, to the. There's a four percent. Uh, uh, Lost to the favorites and a one percentage to the dogs. So now let's go to the dog side. Let's do the dog. So side. if you played every single dog this year, you won a hundred and ten games, and you lost a hundred and eight games. So a hundred and ten games. 
you made 11,000 even. Right? Correct. Right? And you're at 108 games. We'll say again, you could get better juice in other spots, but mm -hmm. let's say you lost $11,880. Right. So, but you have a winning record, but there's no variance. There's no variance. Right. Correct. It's equal money. You lose $880. So we have clients that are hell-bent stuck on not varying their wages. They don't understand the principles of math and trading, which is variance, varying their wages. So two sets of data are in the same season, two games up, two games down. Now let's go back to the math I originally said. If the line maker does his job, it's going to be a 50-50. Look how hard it is to beat the line. We're talking dead. All these people sitting there analyzing, filling out parlay cards, and doing suicide pulls. Now, think of it now, looking back, how many weeks we're into the season. 50, 50, plus, minus two games. Right at the middle. It, sh it shows the how hard it is to actually beat the number. Now, let's talk about the top five teams against the spread. Well, we already know that off the top of my head, the New England Patriots are 12 and two, and I believe they're 11 and three against the spread. So they are an absolute money making machine. You bet on the Patriots, you bet them on the money line. If they can, you could do it because the money line would be so high. And you bet them against the spread, and you absolutely kill it. And then you, um, and then you, I want to move a little bit because security is wondering why I'm sitting here the whole time not moving. And then you, um, and then you, and they're 11 and 3 against the spread. The second, what was the second team on the list? Dallas Cowboys. They didn't cover yesterday, but up to that point, I think they're 9 and 5 against the nine spread. 9 and 5 against the spread. Then Oakland Straight was up. 9 and 5. Straight up, they're 12 and 2. Okay, so yes, and then you got Atlanta. Your next was one. Oakland. They're nine and five against the spread. They right. are eleven and three. Right. And then finally, it was Atlanta again, nine and five against the spread, and they were nine and five. And then let's talk about one of those wild ones. And then you have the Washington Redskins on the list, which they're actually we saved the best for the last. They're actually number two on the list. Correct? correct. We just we called it out of order because we don't want to sway anybody to thinking that it's actually a selection. Um, right. Give us the data on the Washington Redskins. Right. Tell me the data on the Washington Redskins. Washington is nine and four against the spread, and they're seven five and one straight up. So they're only up two games, but they are. Nine and four against the spread. So interesting enough, they're a money making machine because they've probably been a dog more than they've been a favorite. Correct. Um, so here's what you have to understand: How does that play into tonight's game? Well, if they've been a dog more than they've been a favorite, and tonight they're a favorite, it doesn't really mean anything. People will go and they'll look at this and they'll go, "Oh, they're number two on the list." Well, so is Dallas. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. You know, we know our sources had Tampa Bay last night. By the way, let me ask you something. What makes that slot machine a high-limit slot and this slot machine a low-limit slot? It takes more, it takes, it takes more me, money. It takes – no, it just – I. it takes me quicker to right. lose my money in that Correct. slot machine. Right, Because the variance in these machines is all man-made in the machine. There is no really – there's no – I mean, this is just like total insanity as far as I'm concerned. Now, back to real reality. Let's talk about the sport – I'm looking for a trash can to throw this empty coffee can. If they have plenty of machines to take your trash change, but they don't have a machine a place to dump your coffee can. I was up here meeting a client. It's a nice place because it's off the strip. I prefer, you'll notice when you see me do these videos, I'm at the Rio, I'm at the Palms. I like to try to stay off the strip because you get the more hardcore traders coming in and out. And then you also have the ability to use the mobile apps. So anyway, let's talk about real data. Everyone's hyper-focused on football. 
But now let's talk about shrimp for a living. And let's talk about the data that I was pulling with my guys here on the Vegas Strip. Right? Mm -hmm. College basketball. I got some numbers here that will blow you away. You ready for this? Go ahead. Everybody has this perception that the home team dog in college basketball does so great. Don't you think that as well if I said to you, hey. Logically, you know, yes. Right. You ready? Go ahead. 44% this season, if you played everyone, it's the worst play in college, college in, in all of NCAA basketball this season. It's 44%. It's 107 and 135 and 5 at the, at the right number. Here's the issue, though. The issue is, I'm actually going to walk out of here because it's so damn loud. Here's the issue. Everybody's wearing fur coats and things. It's like 45 degrees. Guys are blasted out here in fur coats. Here's the thing. The thing is, a lot of those 107s, they were dogs that went on the money line. And as you know, right. my, my traders are hitting dogs. And what they're doing is they're hitting dogs on the money line. i got to talk low because people hear me talking. They're going to come over and think that I'm a free pick machine. They got the wrong guy. They can come over and talk to me, but they're going to talk to me. they got to give me a credit card. Then I'll give it to you and you can run it. So what happens basically, and just for people that don't believe, like I'm not like in a stage or anything, the shadow walks mm -hmm. on the Vegas Strip. They're actually cleaning the palm sign as we're doing this video. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's cleaning the end. Look, can you see this guy? I can. Clear as day. This is a, this is unbelievable. Like you want, like I never like, you want to like, hey, somebody like care. Send Johnny up to clean the M. Like what the hell? Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Like can you imagine this? This is your job. You're cleaning the light. No, he's changing the fucking light bulbs. Unbelievable. Can I get a light? Holy shit. Guys, you're seeing something you've probably never seen in your life. The, the lights do get brighter, light. correct? The lights get bright. Oh, he just turned the light. Oh, he's turning. He's I see it. It's flashing. I see it. Out. I see every bit of it. Look, you see the lights are going off? I do. As he pulls up, because he doesn't want to get electrocuted. That is beautiful. Look at this. We're doing a stop. That is amazing. Look at this. He's literally changing. We got to do a pause here for the light celebration. The lights get brighter, the buildings get taller, and the streets get wider, and I get to watch them change the lights. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Look there at it that. is. Look, he's look, look, you see him? Look, I see him old off. school. He's literally turning them off to see which ones are dead. Do you realize how long this takes? You want to talk about inefficiency? Holy shit. How about this? It's about 40 degrees out here. You don't give a shit. So anyway, let's talk about variants. You want to talk about variants, listen to this data that I'm walking around with here in my pocket. It's actually nice from a, oh, a West Coast guy like me. It's like beautiful out here. Dogs. Dogs. So what do you think? You love college basketball, right? Mm-hmm. You think the dogs are doing better at home, or you think the dogs are doing better on? Oh, you think the favorites, excuse me, are doing favorites are doing better covering against the spread. We're only talking against the spread at home or on the road. I mean, for what I've uh, done my research this year, they a lot of favorites have been covering on the road actually. Okay, but here's the thing. Let's break it down. Let's do percentages because you know I'm a percentage better. Sure. The difference is minuscule. We're talking 50.77% versus 49.23%, wow. which makes up the pie of 100%. I'm going to say it again. 50.77% to 49.23%. All this shit is verifiable. So here's the bottom line. Favorites overall have won as a whole in college basketball covered against the spread. 50% of the time dogs have covered overall 49 percent of the time but we're talking by the slimmest of margins at the number it's the same as we just discussed in the nfl correct so we're talking across the board the line makers continue to do their job so when you see people 
And this goes back to when your clients are, when you're on the phone and you're talking to clients and they're hyper obsessed and focused with the micro, I keep talking about the micro, the sample size that we're talking about in these games of this season, for instance, applies over the 30 years that I've been in this business. And this is why traders get very frustrated when they talk to short-term losers versus long-term winners. So just to give you an example, you, you have a calculator? Add I this do. Up. 529 plus 513 plus 19. 529 plus 513 plus 19. 1,061. That's how many NCAA basketball games have been played as of last night. 1,061 since the beginning of the season. And in that season so far, 529 favorites have covered. 513 dogs have covered. And 19 games have pushed mm -hmm. against the spread. We're not talking about totals. We're talking about side action only. You have another... 1,061 plays on the, the over and under. You obviously have another 1,061 plays on the first half. You have another 1,060 plays on the second half. Obviously, you can make three wagers out of, out, of, out, of, out of the game, and then you have a fourth wager with the second half. Right. So, I mean, you have so many. When you go into quarter and in-game and live game better, you can add and add and add more data. But the point is, is that when you look at this, Again, do the math. It's hard to bet the same amount of money on every game and think the expectation of not varying your wages is going to make you money because you can do that. Let's do the math. You have the calculator because I'm, I'm I do. now outside. 529 multiplied by 100 is going to be what? 52, Just to make sure 52, everybody. 52,900. 52,900. Write it down, 52,900. And then write down 513 multiplied by one tenth, considering you don't get reduced juice. 56,430. 56,430. So subtract them. What's the difference? 3530. And what's 529 minus 513? 16. So you're up 16 games and you're down $3,530. Right. S say that for me again. You're down 16 games and you're down no, 35. No, 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 no. You're up 16 games. You're up 16 game. games and you're down 3530 in juice. Say it one more time. You're up 16 games, but you're down 3530, including all the juice. So when you go to a sports handicapper's website and you see them showing you an ATS record against the spread and they have a win-loss record with no money management behind it, now you know how useless that record is. Right, correct. If you showed me that some guy on some dot blah blah expert site or blah 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 handicapper site was 7-3 and three in his last three, is he playing juice free? Is he playing big free? Is he not laying big? If you showed me a guy's site, he was 16-0 in the last 16. That 16-0 in the last 16 could be part of that 529 to 513. Guess what? He's still down $3,500 if he's betting $100 a game. There's your answer to anybody watching this video. If you don't understand simple math and you don't realize how hard it is to win without variating your wager and practicing variance and money management, and you're a guy that's going to call my office and tell Mike, just give me the games. I like playing them for a buck a game, 50 a game. Do yourself a favor. Here, especially when you come to Vegas at the Palms, I love this place. You know why? Why is that? You know why, Mike? Why is that? Right there, they have the IMAX theater. Mm. For seven, eight, nine, ten bucks, instead of going in there to the sports book, if you really want entertainment, Go to a movie. It's cheaper and you know you'll be entertained. That's what you should do if you're not going to variate your wages. Make sense? Absolutely makes sense. Because you're the one on the front lines dealing with these guys. I'm on the front lines getting the information. And I think that most people don't see the math bro broken down in real time. 
And this is the difference between the winners and the losers. Now that I've educated you guys Vegas strip style, and you actually know how the light bulbs are actually changed in real time, anything you want to say about the game that is 45 minutes up the street from you this Monday? By the way, click below if you want to get access to my special offer. I normally charge four dimes for one month. You can get my December to Remember promo. Can you believe I'm giving it away so cheap, Mike? Mm. Must be the gift of giving. The gift of giving. Consider it a, a, a Christmas present from me to you. You're going to get it all literally to the Super Bowl, which is February 7th. And I might find my car between now and then as I roll around here because that's what we call variance. Anything you want to say between now and uh, tonight's no, It's just a Monday very big game? week. It's going to throw everybody off with all the NFL games being played on Saturday this week. But you know what? It's this entire week, and there's so many opportunities and spot plays where we're going to take advantage of. So, as always, we're going to make it a December to remember and uh, march into the new year. Click the link below, guys. You'll be very glad you did. Call Mike if you need to learn anything more about variance. Math is your man. Good day and good luck.